Today in our 2016 Ford F-250, we're going to be taking a look at the B&W Turnover Ball Underbed Gooseneck Hitch, part number BWG NRK1111. So here's what our gooseneck looks like fully installed, and it's going to be great because it's going to allow you to tow all of your gooseneck trailers. Now, when it's in the locked position, the ball's going to not be able to come out, and that's the position we're going to use when we're towing. Now in the unlocked position, we can remove the ball. And we can flip it over. Now we have full access to our full bed. Now here we have our spring loaded safety chain loops. So we're still gonna be able to put our safety chains on, but they're not gonna interfere when we're loading anything up in our bed. Now this hitch features a two and five sixteenths ball. Now it does have a square mount, so you don't have to worry about it turning inside the hitch. It also has a 7,500 pound vertical load limit, which is the amount that it's gonna be pulling on it. And it has a 30,000 pound gross towing weight. Now, I do wanna mention you wanna double check with your vehicle's owner's manual to make sure that your vehicle can handle that weight capacity. Now, here on the driver's side, you can see we have this black handle. And if we pull all the way out and slightly rotate it to the left and push the handle towards the cab of the truck, It'll lock into place and allow us to remove our ball, flip it over, and then we can gain access to our bed. And if we turn it back and release it, it'll lock our ball into place. Now, as you can see, it's going to be a multi-piece design. We're going to have a crossbar here as well as here that attach to our center section. And then we're going to have side plates on the either side of the driver and passenger side. Now that we've gone over some of the features, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we got it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to need to remove our spare tire. And this is just going to make it easier so we have more room under the truck. Our next step is going to be measuring where we're going to be putting a hole in our bed. Now, if we take our tape measure here, and I made a mark right here. Next, we're going to measure the distance between the two wheel wells and where the center matches up with our intersecting line, that's where we're gonna be drilling our hole. Now, before we drill our four inch hole, I'm gonna be drilling a pilot hole with a quarter inch drill bit. Now, I wanna mention here, um, what I'm using here is just a piece of wood that I use my hole saw and cut a four inch hole in it. That way, it'll keep the hole saw from jumping around and I can keep it steady by standing on it while I'm drilling. Now I'm just gonna come back and vacuum up all my metal shavings and clean it up a little bit. Now, since we did just drill a hole and we have bare metal here, I do wanna mention to be careful because it is gonna be sharp, but I'm gonna take a paint marker and I'm just gonna paint around the edge to give it a little bit of extra protection against rust. Our next step after we drilled our hole, we're gonna come back. Right here is gonna be our heat shield, right next to our hole above our axle and right above our exhaust. Now this is just glued on, but we're gonna need to pull this heat shield down and it's not gonna be getting reinstalled because the hitch itself is actually gonna act as a heat shield between our bed and our exhaust. So if we just reach up and start working our way around, we can start pulling it down. Our next step is gonna be removing our exhaust bracket right here, just behind the axle on the passenger side. Now, there's gonna be a bolt coming from the bottom going up, and there's also gonna be one on the inside of the frame rail that's gonna be going out. I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter socket to remove these. Now they're bolts removed. I'm just going to slide our bracket forward and pop it off the rest of the way. Now you may need to get a pair of pliers or a pry bar to take this off fully. And we're going to set this aside because it will be reinstalled later. Now, on some applications, we're going to come up 
to our cross member here between the frame and our bed. And just right behind that, we're gonna have to put a notch in so we can get our bars in for our gooseneck. So I'm gonna come over and like I said, just a little bit behind that cross member and we're just gonna put triangle shape just like that and we're gonna cut a notch out right here. Now I'm gonna be using a rotary tool to cut out our notch here. Now with our notch cut out here, we're gonna take our crossbar and the one we're gonna use is gonna have three notches in it. One here and two on the other end. And we're gonna insert this right here in front of our, where our notch is. And we're gonna go on the front side of the shock mount on the passenger side. Now once we have it in there, we're gonna need to go underneath the side of the truck and we're gonna have to do a little bit of prying to get it put in place. Okay. Now right here, there's the notch where our shock is. And this, we're gonna need to rotate the bar just a little bit. We can get past our shock mount and we can start sliding it back. Now this bar is gonna come all the way back, as far back as we can get it against this other cross beam on the bed. Possibly a pry bar or a pair of pliers to get it where you need it. Now, once we get our bar all the way back to our crossbar here, I'm just gonna take a pair of channel locks. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna rotate it so that the holes and this piece here is up and down. And then our bar, the top section is butted up against our crossbar here on our bed. Now we're gonna take our other bar that has two notches and we're gonna do the same thing, sliding it in from the driver's side, going towards the passenger side. Next, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna grab a pair of pliers we're going to grab our bar, and once we get it lined up on our frame rails, we can rotate it around. Now we're going to take our set center section, and with an extra set of hands, we're going to put it in place. Well, our extra set of hands is going to maneuver our exhaust out of the way so we can get it up in here. Now, you want to go over your fuel lines and everything else first. And then over your exhaust. And at the same time, the exhaust is gonna help hold it in place. Now that we have it roughly in place, and the exhaust is gonna hold it up, we can start to put our bolts in. Now our extra set of hands is gonna get in the back of the truck, and they're gonna line up the top section of our hitch with the hole we drilled so that when we put our hardware in place, it's all gonna line up correctly and we know exactly where it needs to be. We'll go ahead and move our crossbar and butt it up against our center section here. And we're gonna take a half inch bolt followed by a flat washer. And we're gonna insert it from the outside of our crossbar and we're gonna go through the center section of our hitch. And once we have that in place, we're gonna follow it up with a lock washer. And then finally, a half inch nut. And we're gonna tighten it down hand tight for right now. And we're gonna repeat the same process we just did with this bolt with the other two remaining bolts on each end of our crossbar and center section. Now our back bar here, we're gonna to need to move forward and again, butt it up against our center section here. So we may need to rotate it back down, get it close to where we need it, and then we can come back with a pry bar or a pair of pliers to get it back into the position we need. Tap it into place. And now we're gonna repeat the same process with our hardware and the three remaining holes on our back section. 
get everything lined up correctly. And once we get our hardware in place, we're gonna go ahead and repeat the same process for the other holes remaining on our center section and rear beam. Next, we're gonna be installing our side plates. And our hardware is gonna be utilizing this hole here, just forward of our crossbar. This large hole, somewhat in the middle of our two crossbars, and this hole back here behind our rear crossbar. Now, just to make it a little bit easier on myself, before we lower this down and put our side plates in place, I'm gonna take my three quarter inch bolt right here and provide you with this special washer. And this is gonna be used on the driver's side. And we're gonna take our three quarter inch bolt and come in the inside of the frame and hang it right here. So I'm gonna take my bolt and put it on the inside of my frame there. And then I'm gonna take my half inch bolts and I'm gonna put it through the corresponding hole in the frame as well. One here. Now this one may be a little challenging to get through just because of the location of the gas tank. Now that we have our hardware loosely in place, I'm gonna take one of the supplied spacers I'm gonna put it right over our three quarter inch bolt. Now with all of our hardware in place, I'm gonna take our side plate here. And the way we know this is for the driver's side, for one, it's gonna have four holes in the center section here. And it's also gonna have a sticker showing you on your handle to unlatch and latch the ball. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna line it up with our hardware, trying not to knock it in. Once we have it loosely in place, I'm gonna let it sit there and hang on our hardware. Now, here on our three quarter inch bolt, I'm gonna take a lock washer. I'm gonna put that on our bolt. Then I'm gonna follow it up with a nut. And I'm just gonna put everything on here hand tight for right now. Now for our half inch bolts on the ends here, I'm gonna take a half inch flat washer, followed by a lock washer. And then finally, I'm gonna take a nut and put that on the end. And again, we're just putting everything in hand tight for right now. Now we're gonna repeat the same process for the remaining bolt. Now we have remaining bolts here, tying in our side plate with our crossbars. We're gonna take a half inch bolt and a flat washer and coming from the outside, going towards the center of our side plate, we're gonna install the bolt like that. And that's gonna be followed up by a lock washer and then finally a nut. We're going to do the same thing over here with the bolt facing in and the nut on the inside of our center section. And our nut. Now there's only going to be a few differences here on the passenger side. We're still going to be using our three quarter inch bolt, but instead of the special washer, we just have a regular three quarter inch washer that's going to be going on. So if we come to the back side of our frame here, Install our three quarter inch bolt here and our two half inch bolts will be utilizing this hole right in front of our front crossbar and back here right below the bed cross member, this hole right here. Now with all the hardware in place, we're going to put that same spacer on the passenger side. Then we can take our side plate and we can install it and hang it on our existing hardware in there. And once we have that in place, then we can go ahead and come back and do the same process with the nuts and washers, just like we did on the driver's side. Now that we have all of our hardware in place, we're gonna come back and we're gonna to torque all of our center section bolts first. And we're gonna to torque them down to the amounts specified in the instructions. And we're going to repeat the same process and torque down all the remaining hardware in our center section. Now with our center section bolts torqued down, we're going to come to our side plate and we're going to start with these and torque these half inch bolts down to the specified amount in the instructions. 
Then we're going to be using a three quarter inch socket on one end and a three quarter inch wrench on the other. And we're going to repeat that process for the remaining half inch bolts. Now for these side plate bolts, it's going to be easier if you put the torque wrench on the outside and have a wrench on the inside frame rail just because of everything in the way like the shocks and the exhaust. We're going to torque those to the specified amount in the instruction as well, still using the same three quarter inch socket and three quarter inch wrench. And we'll repeat that process for the remaining bolt back here. Now that all our half inch bolts are torqued down, we're going to torque down our three quarter inch bolt. And here I'm going to be using an inch and an eighth socket and an inch and an eighth wrench on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and get my socket on here. I'll go underneath and go to the back side and hold the bolt head with the wrench. Now that we have the entire section torqued down, we're going to repeat the same process on the other side. Next, we're going to be installing our handle for our hitch here. And if we take our handle and coming from underneath the bed, we can feed the handle out. And we're going to line up this loop in the handle with the square hole right here on our hitch. Now, I do want to mention that the handle is going to go on the front side of our hitch towards the cab. And then we're going to come back with our carriage bolt and we're going to feed it through from the back going towards the front of the cab, making sure that it goes through our handle. And then we're going to come back with our 5 16th flange nut and we're going to put it on the back side. You just when installing this, you just want to be careful and make sure that your handle is around the bolt and that the carriage bolt and nut will sandwich the handle in there. And we're just going to snug it down hand tight and then come back and tighten it up all the way. And I'm going to be using a half inch socket and I'm going to snug it down. Not crazy, but just nice and snug so we don't have to worry about that carriage bolt backing out. Next, to install our safety chain loops on the outside of our bed, we're going to come underneath here and we're going to have two holes on either side of our receiver tube right here. We're going to have two here and we're going to have two on either side of our handle. Now we're going to need to drill a half inch hole through the bottom of our bed using these holes as a template. Now I'm going to start out using a quarter inch drill bit to start a pilot hole so when I do go make my final half inch hole it'll be a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process and drill the other three remaining holes. Now with our pilot holes drilled I'm going to come back with a half inch drill bit and finish drilling my final hole. Now I'm going to repeat that and finish drilling out my other remaining holes. Now here's the holes we drilled from underneath. We're going to take our supplied U-bolts and we're going to drop them into place and we're going to go back underneath and put some hardware on them. Next, we come underneath the truck. Here's our U-bolts hanging down. We're going to take our spring here and with the larger end facing up, we're going to slip it over one end of our U-bolt and then we're going to take the supplied nuts we're going to thread it on so that it's the bottom of the U-bolt is flush with the nut. So it's going to end up looking up just like that. And we're going to repeat the same process on the other side. Next, we're going to bring our attention back to our exhaust mount that we took off. And we're going to get the supplied bracket to lower our exhaust down. Now, first, we're going to take a 5 16 carriage bolt and we're going to put it in this bottom hole here on the flat end with the single hole. And we're going to mount and thread that through the bottom part of our exhaust clamp, followed up with a 5 16 flange nut. Now, for now, we're just going to put this on hand tight. We're going to take our quarter inch carriage bolt here and we're going to insert it through the back half so it comes out back here. 
Next, we're going to take our quarter inch flange nut and we're going to put it on the back side just hand tight again. Now that we have everything all snugged up by hand, we're going to come back and for our 5 16 bolt and flange nut, I'm going to be using a half inch socket to tighten everything up. Now, if we come back to our quarter inch, I'm going to be using a 7 16 socket to tighten it up as well. Now, to make it a little bit easier to install our exhaust bracket, I'm just going to spray a little bit of penetrating oil into the rubber isolator, making it slip on a little bit easier. So I'm going to take my bracket, making sure that the silver tab facing up is on the outside of the frame, and I'm going to slide it over the rubber isolator, just like that. If we take our supplied spacer right here, we're going to go in between our frame and our bracket right here, and then we're going to feed our carriage bolt through. Next, we're going to take our 5 16 carriage bolt again, and we're going to feed it through to the back side. And again, taking our 5 16 flange nut and tightening it down on the back. And then we're just going to put our flange nut on our carriage bolt, and we're going to come back and tighten it up. And again, I'm going to be using a half inch socket to tighten it up. Now we're going to come out to our handle here on our driver's side, and we're going to pull straight out until it stops, and then slightly rotate the handle while pushing towards the driver's cab, and it'll lock it into place. Now we're going to go ahead and move back into the bed of our truck. Next, we can take our ball, and we're going to drop it down into place. And then we're going to release the handle so that the pin can go through and we're going to make sure that the pin goes all the way through the ball. Now with the pin engaged, there's no way to get the ball out and it's securely in there. Now the last step, we're going to go ahead and pull, remove the pin again, pull the ball out and go ahead and grease it up so that we don't have to worry about it getting any corrosion on it. So I'm just going to take a small amount of grease on my hands here. I'm just going to get it nice and lubricated so we don't have to fight when we put our ball in or take it out. We go ahead and drop it back into place and re-engage the pin. Now with everything in place, all we have left is to reinstall our spare tire. Now that'll finish up the look at the B&W turnover ball underbed gooseneck hitch, part number BWGNRK1111 on our 2016 Ford F250. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.